All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the After Kerbin Planet mod, which is being made by Formuser Games Links. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a complete reimagining of the Kerbin star system four billion years into the future and oh I cannot tell you how much I love this mod and I really really do have to thank all you wonderful viewers who have sent this one to me because I kept seeing it on the forums but I kept confusing it with a mod we looked at some time ago which of course was the before Kerbin Planet mod, which was made by the same mod maker, Games Links, but that one was a reimagining of the star system billions of years in the past. And so I kept seeing this one and confusing it, going, that sounds awfully familiar. Oh, wrong time scale. <laughs> and so here we are to finally take a look at it, and I love that idea. So Games Links has made one in the past. We, of course, have played the stock system in the present, and now it's time to look four billion years into the future so into the tracking station we go and uh let's actually zoom out before we talk about solitude here and uh, just start this time around at our lovely star which is no longer kerbal no it is Archangel. And, well, Archangel is nearing the end of its life and beginning to expand and die, and because of that, Moho is completely gone. It has been destroyed by the ever-encroaching Archangel, which means that uh, the first planet we're going to encounter, which normally would be Eve, is Demise. And this planet is also on its last run, if we zoom in here so you can see it. The once vibrant world of Eve is now shattering, thanks to the proximity to the giant star, as you can see right there. It's just creating all sorts of gravitational forces, cracking up the mantle of this poor, poor world. And I love the little bits of lore that are added on the info panels here, because if you guys remember in the before Kerbin Planet Pack, in the past, they actually posed the idea that Eve was the original homeworld of the Kerbals, but they then inevitably abandoned it as it got toxic and went to Kerbin. And so you will still have that, uh, you know, little thing here stating that it was the original homeworld of the Kerbals. They called it Eden. And, uh, yeah, so that means we move on now to what was once Kerbin, but no, now. It is Wasteland. Oh God, and look at how much it's changed. The world has just fallen apart. The previous civilization that inhabited it has long since left the planet to die. And look at that beautiful ring. You guys know me, I'm a sucker for a ring world. And uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Kerbin <laughs> burning and boiling with a nice lovely ring. And it is gorgeous. I actually really, really do like the look of the planet here. It is quite cool with these coloring. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it has an atmosphere, but it's, it's not a safe one. And, uh, there we go, our beautiful wasteland. And we then have its one and only moon, Malice, which was formed by a collision of the moon and Minmus, which also did, of course, create the, uh, lovely ring we have here, the collision of the two, and Malice is sitting here watching as the old home world dies. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. And so that means we now move on to the new home world, which was once Duna, but now is Solitude. Duna has become an inhabitable world over the four billion years since the present day, and it is a gorgeous planet. I really, really do love the look of Solitude here. It is simply amazing. And the Space Center, I uh, added a uh, ship to the launch pad there so you could see, that is where the Space Center now lies. It's on top of a mountain overlooking this, um, well, I guess you'd call it a sea or something. Yes, I was about to say lake, but that's way too big for a lake. That is definitely more of a sea. And uh, yeah, it is an absolutely gorgeous world. I really do enjoy it and of course it does have 
two moons. The first being Guardian here, which uh, apparently formed from bits and pieces of asteroids coming in and, uh, you know, forming this thing. Yay. And then we also have its other moon, Nemesis, which would be a fun one to land on as according to this little info sheet, has the highest mountain to size ratio of anything in the system. Which, um, I like. It's, it definitely would be a challenge to land in some of these places, especially canyons like in there. Very cool. We then move on to a very, very interesting world. Drizzen. Which, uh, yeah, the lone wanderer Drizzen gains upon the fiery end from afar. And yes, we have this lovely new planet here with uh, Fissure being its moon, which uh, has been formed by the collection of mass from the once named Dre's asteroid belt. So there we go, another lovely dead world for you to go and explore, gazing upon, of course, the end times for this entire star system fun don't you love it and then we move on to reaper as it loads there we go and this is a very interesting one this used to be jewel <laughs> apparently according to the info sheet here the kerbals were very wrong about reaper despite its huge size it tries its best to cover its surface with a thick layer of clouds. Unfortunately, the clouds have thinned, and so a surface is now visible on the planet. <laughs> there we go. We got a giant, giant friggin' former gas giant world. Wow, I said giant way too many times there. That actually does have land. <laughs> there we are. I, uh, I really do like that. It's a very interesting change of pace. I, I didn't expect this when I was going through the planets, but I like it. And yeah, a very large world does have an atmosphere, a very thick one. And uh, with the cloud cover, it is very difficult to land on because it is just a very low visibility, but very cool. And of course, we do have another giant ring, which you know me, again, I love rings. And then we have Arados here, one of its uh, moons, which has uh, a couple of oceans on it. And apparently, according to the info sheet, makes for the perfect vacation spot with the lovely seas scattered around it. So there we are. And uh, on to the next star. Vaum, which is just a very, very tiny little moon there, uh, which has, uh, yeah, observed the devastation of the Julian system, apparently, as time has passed, made from the rocky debris of things around here. And then we have Tylos, which is, oh god, what was this one? I, I'm suddenly forgetting. Apparently this one, uh, observed as Bop orbited this moon, captured millennia ago, and then collided with it and kind of cracked it into pieces. There we are, I'm suddenly remembering. Well, from reading. <laughs> and uh, yes, the next moon here is Valiant, which actually does have a very thin atmosphere, 20 to 30 kilometers in thickness. And uh, as you can see, does have some beautiful oceans and land masses for you to land on. A very cool little world. And then moving swiftly on to Eltos, which uh, has gorgeous oceans scattered about it and uh, has a temporarily breathable atmosphere, apparently, but is uh, far from truly habitable as it is so far out that it is still extraordinarily cold. So, uh, yeah, there we go. And that brings us back to the blinding light of Archangel and uh, the end of this mod. I really, really do love this mod. I, I, I loved the before Kerbin mod, so now having after Kerbin is just as cool. I, I really love this reimagining of the different time scales and seeing the evolution of a star system. And being such a fan of the before Kerbin one, I love just looking at all the differences between before Kerbin, the star standard Kerbin system we're used to, and now this new after one. It is just so, so very cool. And the location of us on formerly Duna, but now Solitude is just, well, very interesting. Like I said, we're kind of on a mountain. So as you can see here, there's just a giant drop off to the ocean over there. So it does make for a, an interesting launch location, but one that I think 
thoroughly enjoy. So if you would like to go and check out this star system for yourself, which I would definitely suggest that you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But I will say right off the bat there, well, actually not right off the bat, we are quite deep into this episode now, but uh, it is pretty resource intensive as planet packs go because there's just so much to this thing. And plus it is using even scatterer, etc. So there's a lot of graphic overhauls to it. So it it, uh, it can be pretty intensive, but it is very much worth it as it's just a great addition to the game, I think. So definitely go check it out. Link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. And slowly but surely take off from this world. Later, folks.